Now let's join Jody for our studio interview. Kia ora Jody. Kia ora Scotty. Joining me today is Green Party co-leader Mertedia Tude and business champion June McCabe. Ms McCabe is part of a government task force with a budget of $4.5 million per annum dedicated to introducing and implementing initiatives to drive Māori prosperity. Kia ora. Kia ora. June, from a business perspective, what do you make of this new deal? I think it's fantastic. I mean, um, it's fantastic because it's a demonstration of iwi leadership. Um, they've taken a proactive view about the opportunity and there's a lot to go to happen yet. And that's the nature of the agreement and the relationship. But he's got such a positive view and the corporate putting their arms, putting their, you know, wanting to willingly work with that. Uh, I think it's, it's only going to be a positive thing. I think there's a lot of hard work to do underneath all of that, but... Um, it's a good start. Metidia, from a green perspective, what's your view on what's just happened here? Well, geothermal is an excellent alternative um, energy resource, and you know, so it's great to see further development of that. It's really good to have seen that there is a way for those big corporates to have effective relationships with Iwi and Hapu on the ground over these really big developments, and that's great too, with a focus on the sustainability of the resource and the protection of Kaitiakitanga, as, as Lenny Johns was saying. Um, There's been a lot of talk that th this particular group, just because it's Māori, may not have the necessary skills or qualifications to be absolute kaitiaki. I mean, do they have the skills in business or in land protection? Are you talking about the, the contact? Or, or the just Māori business in general? Oh. Oh, well, I mean, my perspective is a Māori business... Uh, uh, in whatever form they're trying to do their work, if they have a focus on kaitiakitanga, well then they can find their expertise from their own tikanga, from their own olds, you know, however they want to, to exercise that. That's up for them to decide. Um, but, the, but the issue, I mean, there's some issues here. You know, there's, the, the process was fast-tracked. Um, the, there was, it was really good that the iwi and hapu had a commercial, a Māori commercial entity that could back them and provide them with support um, and that, so they could engage with contact on a sort of equitable basis. That isn't going to be the case for many, many other similar developments and you have, you know, consider um, the turbines, the, um, the turbines that are being developed in the Kaipara Harbour, for example, which is a huge daru daru at the moment and it continues to be so. So this is a really great example where it can work and is a good model for where it can work, but um, it's not going to work like that everywhere. Environmental um, sustainability and the rights of hapu and iwi could easily be run over by large corporates who are trying to fast track through the process. June, it, it, yeah. looks like, it looks like what they've done in this situation is cut out the middleman. Uh, is that the future for Māori business, do you think? I think the first thing to note is what they did was they went and got the right skill set to work with them so that they could utilise, you know, people who, who knew what they had uh, could do. And, I mean, bearing in mind the CNI settlement, you know, mm. these people were all part of that settlement. And that settlement was significant for a whole host of reasons, you know, bringing all those divergent views and stakeholder interests all together and making that uh, work. Now, that's an exceptional um, a starting point. So, but in a general sense, you know, there is a an issue throughout the country where capability is a problem. That's when we get into skills, development, education issues. You know, this Why is it a problem for Māori business in terms well, of capability? I think it's a problem because we have started you know, at the tougher end. We, we work hard at in areas where we need some capital, but access to that capital is, is virtually it experience impossible. As well, it's a combination of experience, but it is also about you know skills and and how do you acquire those skills and what skills do you acquire if you take a longer term horizon? I mean, geothermal development is about you know a whole host of different skills, and we what we have is a mass people today. You know, we come from labour labour based backgrounds predominantly, or service sector, but you know. Uh, um, skills and qualifications. You know, Excuse we're me. talking about <coughs> science. You know, now we're talking about getting ourselves into much more innovative areas. Now, that's a plan, an education plan, yeah. a training and skills development right. plan. You know, we have to be standing back and looking at how that plan, because we're talking about 50 years, 100 years, you know, thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, looking in, in terms of what the task force is doing with research and science, uh, how will that work out and will that lead to any jobs? Well, my 
wishes that it, of course, that that's why else would we do it? But I think this, what I'm trying to do at the moment with this research and science innovation, you know, piece of work, is to say, to be able to say both to Maori and to government, look at the investment opportunity we have in front of us, and if we don't align all the policy settings, you know, the regulation, regulatory frameworks that enable us to truly unleash that potential, along with that, we need to develop our people absolutely, but we have have to see what it looks like, what it could look like. Is $4.5 million enough? We you know $4.5 million, will never, but there's never enough. But, you know, that, that argument kind of runs a bit, you know, you get a bit whore with that argument. Because at the end of the day, we actually need to understand where the money's going in order to get the, the money back. And I see lots of research going into places, and we were talking earlier, mm. where nothing comes back out. I think the alignment is key, and I think this research is going to say, here is what the asset base could look like, but to do that, you've got to spend this sort of money. And at the moment, we might have a lot of assets, but we certainly don't have the cash to develop them and truly understand the potential of them. Mm. Let's go back to this fast track process mm. for, for business. Um, it's my understanding they're basically a Fano. They're not the major natural large grouping that the government is used to dealing with. Good. So if you have Māori landowners, what's the potential there, June? I think that co co these models, this is about collaborative, cooperative models, community-based mm. models, uh, and they are the, the way forward because the, owner, the, the empowerment of that, you know, he is absolutely, you know, the smile on his face, he's very, very happy with his, what his decision is, and they've made a decision. Mm. That's it's, the thing. Isn't it, that great? They've made one. You know, they didn't sit there and look for perfection. And they just get on with it. Is there a concern or is there any dangers that these sort of fast-tracking decisions are denying sort of environmental there, full checks? There, there could be, and that, that, that is the problem. That you, in the worst-case scenario, what you'll have is uh, companies that will try to buy off Iwi and Hapu, um, where, envi where the environmental controls are very poor, where the Iwi Hapu whanau don't have the negotiating capacity to really get what they need, and that the it, what, what always happens in these cases, in the cases similar to this, is around the duress of poverty, that you have, you know, a hapu that really ha is in quite serious need of some kind of financial resources or some kind of support, who don't feel they've got any choices, can't negotiate anymore. So, so there is a real risk of that, and environmental sustainability issues falling to the wayside as a result. So, June, one of the things you'll be looking at, this is all part of the Māori Economic Task Force. Who do you guys actually report to and how will you be judged? <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, well, we report to the Minister, uh, 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 Peter Sharples. How will be, we be judged? Um, well, proof is always in the eating. Mm. Um, you know, um, we are backing um, initiatives that we think will create the environment. I mean, if there's one role of government, it's to create the environment. And um, I can see a myriad of issues, and we've got to start somewhere. And I think that, um, you know, my focus is on a lot on innovation, uh, because we can't continue to do the same thing and expect different results. You know, and, and we still are haunted by negative statistics, yeah. uh, and unemployment clearly is one of them. You know, poverty is... Unemployment criminal. and poverty are huge things for your Green Party. You are enjoying yeah. incredible success at the moment. What's Thank that you. about, do you think? Um, I think it's because we've been talking about issues around inequality, the, uh, the gap between rich and poor, and because we have solutions for how to deal with it. I mean, in the context of Māori economic development, we have two... We have a very significant short-term need and then the long-term investment need for how we're going to plan our economy economic future. Um, but in the very short term, people need jobs and they need houses. Those are the two major, major issues. Um, Māori unemployment has risen significantly and we still have thousands and thousands of our whānau who don't have proper, safe, dry ha um, housing. Now, in our view, we can solve both pro problems. We could, we, could, we could build some 6,000 homes over a three to four year period and create 28,000 jobs to fulfil today's need, knowing that the other work has been done for the future. Kia ora, thank you very much. I look forward to hearing more about that later on. Kia ora. Kia ora. Kia ora.